I love to play chess. I'm, I'm awful at it because I don't play enough in, in practice. Mm -hmm. But there was a, a news story that I saw recently. Um, Google and DeepMind did an mm -hmm. AlphaGo project where they created a computer AI that plays Go. Yeah. And then they created one called AlphaZero that plays chess. And the interesting thing for me is... And, and Go, it, it plays Go as well, yeah. Well, it, it, it's the same kind of base AI from the company, but AlphaZero was the, was the chess entity, as far as I know, doesn't matter. No, the, the, uh, as, as far as I know, it actually, so the, the, the breakthrough here is that it used to be that you know, the best chess playing computer in the world was hard coded just to play chess. It couldn't, it, it couldn't play tic-tac-toe, it couldn't play anything else. DeepMind has found algorithms that, can, that are kind of game independent. And yeah, yeah, we're getting there. And, yeah, okay, so go, go ahead. Yeah. So here's the cool thing for, for me. They, they didn't give it a history of games. They didn't give it an opening book. They gave it the rules of chess, let it play itself, and in four hours it had learned everything that humans and every other chess computer had ever learned about chess and demolished the best yeah. chess computer on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. So when it's you, say, you, th you think about this, that, that <laughs> we have continuously been developing the b better chess computers for decades. And some, you know, 20 years ago, the computers got better than people. Uh, and now we have an algorithm that from zero, being completely agnostic as to just what the game is, in, the ma in a matter of four hours, recapitulated all of human and computer knowledge and bested it. And this is, uh, and it did, it did the same for Go, by the way. And, yeah. and, and that's, um, and Go is something that, Go is a, I don't play Go, but Go is a more complex game than chess. And there are many computer scientists who felt that Go was not going to be conquered for, for at least another decade. And not only did they conquer it with AlphaGo, with Alpha Zero, they they conquered it from scratch in a way that uh, that no one had anticipated. So it's. I think when they moved to chess, the idea was that perhaps if chess was solvable, which we don't know, uh, checkers is and has been solved, that maybe Alpha Go or Alpha Zero would be able to actually solve chess. We, we didn't. That didn't happen uh, for the the game theory geeks in the room, but now we have this new style of AI, which Google and DeepMind are optimistic that we can use this in medical research because all the prior chess computers have been trained based on what humans thought about chess. Let's give it the history. Let's give it a history of our moves. Let's you know, kind of impose it with theory about what's stronger and what's better. Mm -hmm. This one taught itself. And setting aside the concerns about the computers coming to take over the world, which I don't have any fear of, um, I, I will gladly serve my computer overlord. Uh, want that on record because this stuff lives forever. Now we have an AI that can teach itself. And, and in the realm of medical research, protein folding, things like that, if we get the baggage of how we have viewed the problems out of the way, is there a greater likelihood that this sort of AI is going to not only reach solutions, but reach them far quicker than we could ever hope to? Well, I think that's the case. I think where emulating the way humans solve problems is good, we should do that, and we're tempted to do that. But yeah, I mean, in the search space of of solutions to problems, there's there's just no reason to think that we are naturally the best at any any one of these things that interests us. To solve. It's just we're not. By matter of evolution, we have not evolved to understand reality in the abstract or at any scale beyond what is just, you know, apes like ourselves can get our hands around. You know, we, 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 there, there's something radically counterintuitive about the way the world is when you get to the very small or the very big or the very old or the very fast. and. Um, we have terrible intuitions about probability. We don't aggregate vast amounts of data well. And yeah, so insofar as we build AI that can do this, uh, I think it's very reasonable to expect that we will, we will build AI that will do it very differently than we 
do it, and it will be it will do it better as as a result. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned intuition because, uh, as somebody who's at least studied the game, not not ending up very good at it, uh, it strikes me that when I watch grandmasters assess a position, that there there appears to be an intuition about the position of. I can throw all these p p possible moves out of the way immediately with, with no thought, and I can focus right. on these likely candidates. And I don't know for sure if it's fair to actually call that intuition or if that is just an, an application of inductive reasoning where they have trained themselves over so many years to not to intuit, but to recognize which things. So how much, I wonder if what AlphaZero does is it's clearly not merely deep calculation. Would it qualify as intuition? Would it qualify as one of the, the foundational things that we tend to view as, as human or as a higher consciousness capability? Well, I, I don't think anyone would attribute consciousness to it. And what we call intuition is a, an act of cognition that we can't really inspect, right? You can't, it is a moment where you, you cognitively pull yourself up by your bootstraps and just know that something seems so. So you, like, if you say that, uh, I'm gonna take you know, a, a mathematical intuition that, that two plus two equals four, or that if, if A is bigger than B and B is bigger than C, well then A is bigger than C, you know, the, the, the transitive property. Right. That just, seems right and you can't make it seem otherwise and and yet you can't break down that any further it's just that there's an intuition that 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 fits uh, so from the perspective of consciousness intuition is always this uh, the, uh, it presents itself as a kind of black box and there there we have other intuitions that allow us to sometimes get beneath uh, uh, other intuitions and, and correct for, we have bad intuitions that we correct for with other intuitions. But at, at, when you can't, when you find the building blocks of, of cognition and understanding and can't reduce them any further, we're tempted to say, well, that's, that's just a matter of intuition. And we learn, we, you, you can learn intuitions. You, you learn, you know, as you say in chess, you, you know, not knowing how to play chess, you don't have any intuition about what you should be doing. But once you're good, you can, you can begin to ignore all these possible moves that a, a novice would consider because you you know at a glance they're they're not worth taking and so much of so much so much of common sense is that uh, and again this exists in every domain we care about it exists socially it exists uh, uh, athletically it exists, I mean, it's just there's there's uh, in every intellectual domain, and mo most of what getting good at anything is, is a matter of, of making what first required conscious deliberative thought and a kind of an explicit understanding of what you should do, and pushing that back to regions of the brain where the lights, lights aren't on, right? So you, you just don't know how you do it anymore. You can't even, you're not even a good teacher of the thing you spent all this time learning how to do. You just know how to do it, well, you know, whether it's a how to hit a golf ball or ride a bike or we end up calling we end up mislabeling it muscle memory and things like that when yeah it's, but it would but it does feel that way and be, and one reason why it is is muscle memory rather than just memory is if you, I mean, you take something like like riding a bike you can't i mean so presumably all of us or most of us know how to ride a bike in this room uh, you, and you have every reason to believe that if presented with a bike right now you'd be able to get on it and start riding but you can't look inside yourself and know that's the case until you do it, right? You, it's not like semantic memory. You can't remember if I asked you, you know, you know what city are we in, or uh, what's the capital of California, or I mean, th 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 these are things that you could recall and bring to consciousness. But your ability to ride a bike is not something you can you can inspect without doing it. And so if so if you happen to have forgotten how to ride a bike unbeknownst to you, you wouldn't, you, you can't know that until someone presents you with a bike and you have no idea what to do with it. Uh, and much of, and, and so one piece of confusion here is that we have this, this word memory, which is a, this a concept of memory, which is not a unitary thing. There are many different types of memory that, that have almost no real estate in common at the level of the brain. Yeah, and the frustrations experienced with, with kind of the malleability of memory 
Uh, I've, I've actually lost money uh, to one of my roommates over something, many times, but over something really ridiculous because I was convinced that I remembered something accurately uh, and, and did not. Um, it was the name of a brand of mustard. It, that's how ridiculous we get. No, it's not Goldens, it's Gluden's. I, I, well, I hope you that, don't make that mistake again. Yeah, that will never happen again. 